three things that are not right in our society. The Internal Security Act has caused much pain and suffering, and only history will tell how many innocents were put, were put away. As the President with custodial powers over the reserves, I intend to encourage the government to do more and utilize it to invest it for the benefit of the people. I shall also examine more closely the appointments to government bodies, statutory bodies, and government-linked companies. I believe that there is an over-concentration of power. Too few people holding too many portfolios within the government. As a result, we find the same individuals occupying many different board memberships. This is not good for Singapore, as it does not allow the younger aspirants a chance to develop their skills, acumen and exposure for high office, for higher office. The President should look into casting the net further and asking whether the various proposals for appointments are as thorough and robust as they should be. Just as the government is accountable to the people, the elected president should also be similar, uh, similarly accountable to the people who elect him. However, up to now, there is not a single annual report detailing what the President has done over the past 12 years. Until this year, we were not even aware that the President does not have the power of pardon in capital cases and that he must take direction from the government. Thus, the appeal to the President for clemency is but an illusion raising false hopes for the families of the condemned. I, and I intend to introduce greater transparency into the working of the presidency by issuing an annual report to the people, detailing all the custodial, ceremonial, diplomatic and social political functions that he has performed during the year. Let me share with you some of my beliefs. In times of economic uncertainty, we must look within, within Singapore. We cannot count on multinational corporations or these two casinos. We must look to ourselves, our own people, our own talents. I want to build up our young encourage the government to provide preschool education for all Singaporeans, but not the type of education that is about test and scoring the highest marks. Yeah. Our children should enjoy their childhood yeah. and at the same time be prepared for the reality of the working world by building up their confidence, resilience and problem solving abilities. I want to build up our youth, make university education much more accessible and beyond that allow them their dreams and aspirations, fund grants that enable them to create and innovate. I want to build up our fellow Singaporeans. A truly meritocratic society needs to level the playing field. Make up for children who come from families whose parents do not have university degrees. We can offer more bursaries and scholarships to help our Malay and Indian students to do even better in school and encourage them to pursue the activities they are talented in. I want to build up our families. We should not have to worry so much about our jobs, our kids, our future. I want a Singapore where people love our country so much that they want to have more children 
and their children want to grow over here and have more children. I want to build up our homegrown businesses. The government-linked companies are too huge and staff out Singaporean small and medium-sized enterprises, stifling the growth of our own talent and limiting the potential for the growth of robust and resilient homegrown industries. The business of government is not to do business. I want to take care of our elderly. I am glad that now our elderly can enjoy subsidized bus fares throughout the day instead of only at certain times. I want to ask if it is necessary for so many indirect taxes to be levied on the people of Singapore, such as the main levy. Hong Kong got rid of it in the last economic recession. Who benefits from the money collected? Many families depend on maids to give their elderly parents personalized care, and the burden on them should be lessened. I want to take care of those who need help. The handicapped, the homeless, the learning disabled. We cannot be a society that leaves our own people behind in the pursuit of material gains that are never enough. These are my beliefs. This is the Singapore I want to see. I am sharing with you what is in my heart for Singapore. I believe in you. Give me your trust. And together we can build a Singapore for our tomorrows, not our yesterdays. In order to achieve this goal, Singapore needs an independent president to do his job and to do it well. But they come. My fellow Singaporeans, very soon you will be going to the polling booth on August 27 to vote in a new president. This is the first real contest in 18 years. I am honored to stand before you today asking for your vote. The PEC has certified me as a candidate of integrity, good character and reputation. It also certified me that I, that as having such experience and ability in financial affairs, that I can effectively carry out the functions and duties of the President. I know that the journey is a long and hard one. But if I walk together with you, I know for sure that we will complete our journey side by side. I know that ordinary Singaporeans like you will have the courage to vote for change. You stood up decisively on May 7 and showed the way for others to follow. So come 27 August, vote with your heart. Put a cross next to the symbol of the heart, the heart of the nation. And if you choose me to be your next president, we shall walk hand in hand, heart to heart, to the goal of Istana, and together we claim, we can claim Singapore as the nation we love, as we share and celebrate our new beginning. You have that power to make a change.
use it and vote me to be your next president. Okay?